which has a small remote control has had the remote go out a couple of times and when that happens you can't raise or lower the graders. Another thing too is the battery box back here, the battery hold down post has broken and I was looking at this and it's basically you have uh, two hot wires from the battery feeding into the connector they go down to two relays and then which feeds the up and down which sends uh, the hot and ground reversed on the brown and blue wire going to the actuator and I got to thinking about that and that's the exact same setup that you have for a winch and uh, so thinking about it even more I just decided to hardwire a winch and a relay on the handlebar running off of my ATV's battery so I'm basically killing two birds with one stone it'll be hardwired for the up and down and the battery will be now using the ATV's battery instead of the DR power graders battery I ordered this switch from Moto Alliance it's basically an in-out switch for a winch and then I also ordered the separate relay um, the way the, the switch works is I run it down through the opening there on the side uh, and you have a single red wire here that I've tied off to help me get it through so the way that the wiring is set up on this is just about a foot or two from where the switch is at you have a single hot wire that gets wired into a connector that's only on when the power is on and it just so happens that Polaris conveniently put two connectors just about where it will be at um, that are only hot when the ignition key is turned on then the other end you have some color coded plugs that then go to the relay here and then you have more color coded plugs on the top of the relay you've got red and black for uh, your positive and negative on your battery and then you have blue and yellow which goes to the actuators but uh, so basically I'm gonna get this all wired up I'm not gonna show you everything I do but so we're going to run the battery to here, we're going to run the wiring back toward the back somewhere where I'm going to put the relay and then I'm going to come out down here with like a wiring connector and I'm going to run wiring along this framing inside of some tubing that I've got uh, back to the actuator. So basically be bypassing the DR power graders battery and the remote control and go into a hardwired system running off of the Polaris battery because the Polaris is the only thing I use to pull the grater so it just makes sense okay so one of the things I wanted to show you I now have the switch mounted on the handlebar they had instructions for the wiring but not really for the switch so basically what you've got you got like two half moon parts here they go around and then you got a little short bar and then you've got a little plate that mounts on the bottom of the switch so then from this side so then once it's mounted you can kind of see there I've got it running behind the wiring uh, the little short bar the two half moons then the plate on the bottom of the switch so that way while I'm you know got my hand on it I can go ahead and get it and then I'll run the wires down and wire tie them to the handlebars You'll have to excuse any wind noise that you hear. It's a really windy day today. Um, I didn't get this finished up the first day I started, but I'm trying to decide where to mount the uh, relay. And I want it to be out of rain and dirt. So it seems like a good location would be where the existing uh, fuse panel is at but there's not a lot of places you can mount it 
without fabricating some sort of a bracket. Right now the way it looks is I'm going to take and come up here where the where the uh, existing fuse panel is at and probably just wire tie it in there. So that would leave me a really short run from there down to there which is maybe seven or eight inches for both the positive terminal there on the left with the red uh, wire ends and the negative which is on the right. Um, so then once that's done I will have to run wires to the back of the ATV to make the connection. Okay so this is what I come up with. Um, I had to take and if you notice on the fuse uh, power distribution center there's a hole on each end and I run a wire tie through it over to the corresponding hole on the relay and then um, with it in place the radiator cap was going to touch this blue terminal and what I did and I'm sure you're probably not going to be able to see it in this light um, there is a right here is a bracket for the radiator um, which is a plastic unit that has a hose attached to it so all I had to do was bend the bracket out some and that gave me plenty of clearance and you can see with me even trying to force forcibly move this it's not budging at all now it might it might move side to side a little bit because of the bracket that the fuse panels on but I don't think that's going to go anywhere so that's going to work perfect what that does is that leaves me with my two connectors that I need that go up to the switch right here easy to get to the terminals are all easy to get to and it'll be covered up and out of uh, rain and dust so now with the uh, switch wires hooked up to the solenoid I now have the wires tucked away this leaves me a clear opening now to get to the solenoid block and run my wires down to the positive and negative I still have to determine where I'm going to run the wires back to the rear of the ATV. This is the uh, wiring diagram for the solenoid. Uh, basically the red post goes to the battery positive and the black post goes to the battery negative. Then you have a yellow and a blue that will go back to the actuator. One thing to note is that on the original wiring for the actuator it was pretty much all 14 and 16 gauge wiring uh, even from the battery to the relays and then from the relays to the actuator so I'm not using normal um, battery post type gauge wiring which is very heavy wiring and the reason why that it's such small wiring is it's not a high load or a high amperage circuit now I've got the battery positive and negative run it goes uh, connects to the relay goes down under the radiator connector tube there's a little bit of slack there and then it comes over here to the um, I said I was using 14 gauge wire I may have uh, misspoken on that what I'm actually using is a 14 gauge primary wire that's for a house so although it's 14 gauge it's still rated for 120 volts um, so it is heavier than automotive 14 gauge wire um, and not only that the sheathing is a lot tougher than automotive 14 gauge wire so uh, I just wanted to clarify that and not give people the impression that I'm using a lightweight gauge wire for the battery positive and negative um, it is extremely good wire it's normally used for like home security system or that sort of thing so this is kind of an optional step but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it and let me tell you why I, uh, when I run the wires back to the back of the ATV, I'm going to run it inside this uh, heat shrink tubing. It's not necessary, um, but I like things that look like factory installation. I like clean installations and clean installs. And it just so happens to be that I have plenty of this. I got 50 foot of it. Um, I placed an order at Amazon and ordered the wrong thing. Didn't feel like shipping it back because the cost to ship it back was going to be about the same as you know the cost of the product so I just kept it 
and uh, now I'm going to run my uh, two wires back to the back of the ATV through this heat shrink tubing. It's a half inch diameter. It's way too big, but uh, you know it, it will provide some additional protection to the wiring and uh, also hide the fact that it has non-factory wiring going to the back of the ATV. So now I have the uh, actuators positive and negative terminals connected and as you can see this is pretty clean looking. So before I go any farther um, I went back to where my wiring is at and stripped off a little bit of the ends and uh, I hooked the positive up to the positive wire and the negative up to the negative. I made sure with the key off I don't have any voltage back to those two wires then I turned the key on checked again made sure I didn't have voltage then I go up to the winch switch and I listen for the relay to engage so listen you can actually hear the relay engage and if I go back to this so relay out relay in so I know that my circuit is working back to the wires so I just have the wires are just shoved in there um, but we go up to our switch and now watch zoom in on this so you can actually see it so when I say out goes down and when I say in it goes up so we can say this in fact does work and now I can finish running the wiring uh, for this setup so uh, by the time all is said and done I finally got this done I've got some decisions to make as far as how I've got this ramp back here um, I wasn't sure uh, when I was running the wire, let me tell you what happened. I remembered that we have a breakaway uh, pin in this tongue. So if that ever breaks, you're basically going to yank all your wiring loose. So I need to get a trailer light connector or something like that. I've got it temporarily set up with just two blade connectors. I'm going to wrap in tape. Uh, run the wiring back. I left a lot of extra back here because I wasn't sure how much I was really going to need. I still got to uh, secure this a little bit better. But uh, I'm going to use it for a couple days before I finish it up and make sure everything's okay.